What's up guys, welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Ardell, and today's video is really for you E4 players trying to find a strong response against the French defense. This is one of the best chess openings for black. It's been played at the master and grandmaster level for decades now, including world championship matches, and it's really been hard for white to find a clear and easy path, even in the main lines, to a clear middle game edge. We can go into the main lines and come out into the middle game with a very slight and small advantage, but even then, Black is well prepared for those variations and well prepared for the positions that arise out of those lines. What can we play against the French defense that is easy to learn and gives us a chance to take our opponent by surprise and play fun attacking chess? In today's video, I'm going to be recommending the ready gambit. And I'm just warning y'all, it looks absolutely crazy. It starts off with b3 and against d5. We now play bishop b2. What on earth is going on? Has Solomon officially lost his mind? He is recommending us to play b3 and bishop b2 against the French defense, allowing black to simply take that pawn on e4. Well, this opening has actually been played nearly 700 times at the professional level, and white has easily won the majority of those games. We're actually completely okay. In fact, we want black to take this pawn on e4. It's going to be hard for black to hold onto this pawn without giving something up. Here black really has two options. One of them is to obviously take the pawn and the other is to simply play a move like knight f6 not accepting that pawn on e4. Let's first go over what happens if black takes that pawn. Well here we're now going to play knight c3 developing our minor piece and attacking that centralized pawn and really now there's two ways for black to defend it. One of them is f5 throwing the pawn up the board really guaranteeing a one pawn advantage going into the middle game and the other is knight f6. Let's first cover knight f6 because I think this is what you're probably going to see most of the time. Against this we're now going to play queen e2. Notice how we're just naturally developing our pieces with knight c3, queen e2, and we now have two attackers on that pawn on e4. The only real way for black to really directly defend that pawn on e4 is through queen d4, but I really don't think that this is a good option for black. We're going to continue with moves like castle and queen side. We could play g4 and g5, trying to kick that knight off of e4. We could play f3, giving up a pawn but getting a huge attacking edge. In either case, we can either get that pawn on e4, which the queen on d4 cannot defend forever, or we can give up the pawn with a move like f3 and get a huge attacking edge. It's honestly just going to be very hard for black to play with the queen right in the center of the board, especially with our bishop aimed directly at it. What happens if black plays bishop b4? The whole idea of this is to really attack the knight on c3, and we may be tempted to take the pawn on e4, but this actually doesn't work because after knight takes e4, we can't take that knight because the d2 pawn hangs, and we have officially lost the game at move 7. So against the move bishop b4, which is really the only move that tries to stop us from taking that pawn on e4, we can now castle queenside. Again, the very next move, we're going to take that pawn on e4, and the only way for black to stop this is by taking our knight, in which case we're now going to play d takes c3, attacking the queen on d8. Queen e7 is more or less forced, unless black wants to play some kind of move like knight bd7. Following queen e7, we can now play f3. And yes, following e takes f3 and knight takes f3, we are down a pawn, but I think that white gets more than enough initiative and activity in the pieces to make up for this pawn. Following a move like knight c6, we can now play c4, really trying to grip that center square on d5 and also activating our bishop on b2, attacking that knight on f6. Following a move like bishop d7, I actually saw a master level game in which white played a3, and after a5, played queen e1. I really like this queen e1 move. White is not trying to checkmate the opponent's king in the next five moves, but is just slowly trying to improve the positioning of the pieces. By playing queen e1, we're putting pressure on that pawn on a5, and on top of that, want to play queen g3, attacking both g7 and c7. So here we see the move castling queenside from black, developing both these pieces, and defending that pawn on c7, in which case we now see white play bishop d3, a very active bishop pair on b2 and d3, putting pressure on the king side of the board. Here black is pretty cramped. I mean, this bishop on d7 is a tall pawn. The only square it can move is to e8, and this knight would love to move somewhere so that this bishop has a little bit more breathing room, but is currently tied down to that pawn on a5. So here black played queen c5, trying to get some kind of activity going but we now have queen g3 attacking that pawn on g7 and following rook hg8. White played rook hg1, 
followed by knight e5. I mean, I think white has a very nice position here, a knight right in the center of the board, attacking eight squares, four of which are on black side of the board. And this knight is currently defended by a bishop, queen, and rook, which are all very active pieces. This queen on g3, also attacking that pawn on g7. We have a bishop on d3, which is a very nice piece, and this rook on d1 that is always ready to be an active piece in this game once this bishop gets out of the way. White actually went on to win this game pretty easily. So that covers the move knight f6, in which case we're going to play queen e2, castle queen side, and take this pawn on e4 if able. But if black does play bishop b4 and takes our knight on c3, we're completely fine. We're going to play f3, get our knight into this game, activate our pieces, and I think that white has more than enough compensation. What happens if black plays f5? I actually think that this is a mistake. Yes, it does guarantee that black is up a pawn going into the middle game, but I think that this move really makes this pawn on e6 weak as well as that square on e5. And on top of that, it gives white a huge edge in development. We're now going to play f3, and we do have to be ready for this bishop d6 idea, which we're going to go over. But most of the time against f5 and f3, you're going to see black play e takes f3, in which case we're now going to take back with the knight. And after knight f6, we actually have a key idea here with bishop c4 followed by queen e2 using both our bishop and our queen to really attack that awkward and backwards pawn on e6 if the pawn even survives which it probably won't this pawn can barely even move it probably can't move to e5 for the rest of the game because we have such a clamp on that square here it's really hard for black to defend this pawn on e6 we did see a game in which black played knight d5 but white simply took that knight and following c takes d5 played bishop b5 check attacking that king on e8 i mean we have a very active bishop pair here an active queen attacking that e6 pawn, a knight that is ready to jump into e5 at a moment's notice. And on top of that, we can castle queenside, bring our rooks to e1 and f1, and we have ourselves a huge attacking edge. I would actually say that white is completely winning this position. So that covers the move e takes f3, in which case we're going to take back with the knight, play bishop c4, followed by queen e2, and I think that white simply has a much better game there. What happens if black plays bishop d6? This is a key idea, and I actually recommend that y'all memorize the rest of this variation. The whole idea of bishop d6 is to put pressure on this g3 square, looking to play queen h4 with check, and if g3, take that pawn, followed by taking our rook on h1. But ironically, white has nothing to be afraid of. We're going to play f takes e4, and against queen h4 check, play g3. We're completely okay if black decides to do this. If queen takes g3, we simply play king e2. And white is actually better in that position. Following queen takes h1, black is currently three points ahead in material. But we can play knight b5, making two threats. Both of which wins us both a pawn and a rook with c7 and a8. Or a pawn and a rook with g7 and h8. Black can't stop both of these. Black can play queen takes g1, really looking to attack that pawn on g3. But we can now just play queen f3, making sure all bases are covered, while also maintaining that double threat of knight takes c7 and bishop takes g7. I find this a very interesting variation coming out of the ready gambit because we're currently down six points in material, but there's simply nothing black can do. From stopping us from winning those six points back let's say black plays a move like knight f6 well we simply take that pawn on c7 followed by king d8 we take that rook we're going to continue with moves like castling queenside aggressively attack that king on d8 and i would personally pick white in this position every single time so going back to our original position, we're actually completely okay if black takes this pawn on e4. In fact, we want black to take this pawn because we have knight c3, queen e2, castle queen side, take that pawn on e4, or play f3, and we're playing aggressive attacking chess. What if black doesn't want to go into d takes e4 and instead plays a move like knight f6? Now I do want to mention that knight f6 really makes a ton of sense in terms of chess opening strategy. This bishop, a move before, was a prisoner to the pawn on g7. So by playing knight f6, this bishop is now free and therefore the king to castle. 
Here, we don't want to take this pawn on d5, but instead keep this game hyperdynamic and play e5, attacking that knight on f6. Following knight fd7, I personally like this idea of queen g4 followed by f4 and knight f3. There's really nothing black can do from stopping these three very aggressive moves, keeping the pressure on black. In this position currently, we're attacking this pawn on g7, keeping this bishop on f8 a prisoner. We need to, in the ready gambit, keep the pressure on our opponent's pieces. And on top of that, we currently have f5 ideas really putting pressure on that e6 pawn. So the combination of putting pressure on g7, keeping this bishop a prisoner, and also winning to play f5, black will oftentimes play g6, really looking to clamp down that f5 square and also fee and shadow the bishop. But against this, we're completely fine. We're going to play bishop e2, castle kingside, and against a move like castling kingside, we actually have a ton of different options here. Some prefer the move c4, putting pressure on d5. We could also play c3, and then after c3, play knight a3 and knight c2, really trying to clamp down down that fourth rank, making sure that black has no attacking chances there. I personally really like queen h3, which puts pressure on h7 and e6. And on top of that, we now have g4 ideas later on in the game, maybe five or so moves from now, gaining space on the king side of the board. And black actually needs to be very careful in this position. I mean, if black plays a move like b6, we now have knight g5, threatening mate in one. And if h6 is played, we simply take that pawn on e6, attacking both the queen and the rook, and following black taking our knight, we have queen takes e6 with check. We're going to continue by taking that knight on c6, pick that pawn off on d5, and white is simply winning this game. This is resignable for black. If you'd like to learn more on the theory behind the delayed wing gambit, a strong and rare response against the Sicilian defense, click the video to the left. If you'd like to learn more about the hippopotamus defense, a fun and strong chess opening for black, click the video to the right. Leave a comment to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.